If you're getting ready to take a flight and want to know what you need to do in order to be able to take your firearm with you, then this video is for you. Stay tuned. What's happening guys? Welcome back to the S2 Strategic Defense channel. In today's video, I'm going to answer a very common question and that is, what do you need to know about traveling with your firearm? Meaning you want to take a commercial flight, you want to take your blaster with you, what do you need to know to make sure that that happens and that you don't end up in jail? I'm going to answer that for you in this video. Now keep something in mind. I travel a lot, literally every single week. I'm in an airplane at least twice. And so this is something I'm super acclimated to. Now there's going to be some nuances back and forth when I give you guys this, but believe it or not, it's really not that painful. I'm sure sometimes you run into a gate agent or a TSA agent who's feeling a little bit ambitious, but for the most part, as long as you're prepared, going to get through pretty, pretty quickly and pretty smoothly. So let's talk about what you guys need to know. All right, guys. So the very first thing that you want to do is two pieces of research. Number one, check with the airline that you are intending on flying with, whether it's American, United, Delta, Spirit, Southwest, whatever. Okay. Just jump on their website and see if they have any specific rules and regulations when it comes to transporting a firearm with them. Now, 99.9% .9 of them are all pretty much the same. Every now and then you'll see some little nuance to something. You want to get caught by that, so just make sure that you're prepared that way. The second thing that I want you to take a look at is take a look at the gun laws for the destination state. Okay, so if let's just say that you live in Texas, but you're going to Illinois. Well, the gun laws are completely different. How you transport a firearm, what's legal, what's not legal, reciprocity, unilateral agreement, all these types of things all take place. And so what you want to do is that make sure that even if you got to destination, once you leave that airport, that you're abiding by their laws, right? And so double check and see what that state's uh, rules, regulations, and statutes are. Keep this thing as legal as possible. All right, guys. So now that you've done your research as far as the state laws at destination and then any kind of regulations that the airline might have, the next thing to do is prep your bags. When I say prep your bags, empty them out top to bottom, every little thing. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people get busted with spent casings or a knife or something that they're not supposed to have in their carry-on bag, okay? Keep something in mind. You can't travel with that stuff in carry-on. All of the stuff that you want to take with you must be checked in, period. Full stop, all right? So nothing gets carry-on. Everything's going to get checked in. So empty out your bags, make sure that they're clean, make sure that there's nothing in there, make sure there's no, you know, gunpowder residue, that kind of stuff. So I typically take like a, a cold towel and kind of wipe everything down, make sure it's all on the clean side that way. So prepare yourself for travel. All right, guys, so the next thing that you want to do is prepare your firearm and ammunition for travel, okay? Firearms have to be completely dry. So lock the gun open, make sure that there's nothing in the chamber, take the magazine out, make sure that the gun's completely empty, that the magazines are pretty empty. I go one up on that. I actually throw a chamber flag into my firearm anytime I travel with it because although it's not like mandatory, anything that would indicate that the firearm is empty and dry is always going to work in my favor and it's not like it's getting in my way anyways. And so I always throw a chamber flag into it. As far as ammunition itself, we're going to talk a little bit about how and what is acceptable as far as containers for both the firearm and the ammunition in just a second. But what I really want you to do is make sure that you check, double check, triple check the firearm. And by the end of this process, we're no longer touching the firearm or the ammunition. Nobody is. Okay. And so really verify and confirm what condition you left your gear in. So the next thing that you're going to need is some kind of a lockable hard case designed for firearms. Okay. When I say lockable, it could be an integrated lock, like a combination or some kind of a touch pad, or you can have a place for a lock that you purchased yourself, a pad lock, a TSA approved lock, that kind of a thing. I tend to find stuff that's already got built in locks on it because, well, you know, I lose keys and all kinds of stuff all the time. I lose locks all the time too. So better off for me just to be built in. That's up to you. Now, cost wise, look, I'm not endorsing any product. I've seen them as 50, 60 bucks. I've seen them as high as 500 bucks. That's a pick your flavor. Okay. Don't go cheap. All right. What I'll tell you is either get a pr proper Pelican case or a hard metal shell case. That's what I like. I like the metal ones myself. They're a little bit heavier, but I think they're just much more durable. Now, people ask me all the time, Hey, Nick, can I use the hard case that my Glock came in or my Springfield came in? And the answer is, 
I wouldn't. Uh, I understand that those things have a place to put a lock on them sometimes. They're kind of built pretty flimsy. The plastic that they use is plenty fine to go for to the range and back, but when you're talking about, you know, some baggage guy who's dumping, you know, bags on top of it, I'm not going to be convinced that that thing's going to, you know, last for too long. And so I would just spend a couple bucks, make an investment, it'll last you up for a lifetime, okay? Now, when it comes to the ammo, the ammo also has to be in its own case. It has to be separate than the firearm, okay? It doesn't have to be in a metal case. It could be in the box that it comes in, right? So if you guys go off and buy like, I don't know, whatever, Blazer Brass or something like that from your local sporting goods store, that box is perfectly fine. Or you could buy a metal or hard plastic Pelican type that is designed for ammunition. What you can't do is put it inside of a sock and throw a zip tie on it or some kind of a Ziploc bag or some kind of a soft pouch. It's got to be in a hard case, okay? So a hard case for the firearm, hard case for the ammo, the two have to be completely separate. Also keep in mind, you're not going to roll up there with like a pallet full of ammo. I think there's like an 11 pound or maybe 9 pound limit. You have to double check that. But there's a limit as far as the weight goes on how much ammo you could take. And then earlier I said check with the regulations for the uh, airlines. I know I've been on airlines where like you can only take up to one box of 50 rounds. So keep something in mind as far as how much you're traveling with, and that's why you want to do your research up front. All right, guys, so here's one of the cases that I use all the time. I've had this thing for about, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. It's taken a beating, not a ding in it. Lock works perfectly fine. Opening mechanism works perfectly fine. This kind of a box, which is a metal case, also comes with this cable, all right? And I'm going to show you guys this real fast. This cable... What I typically do with this is I will find the frame for the suitcase. I'll run the cable behind the frame and I'll tie it in a loop, okay? Then you have this other little fitting that's kind of holding the loop in place. My particular case has a place for that to go in, all right? So once I have it, I got the case itself and the cable kind of hanging off of it, right? And that's tied to my suitcase. So you can't just snatch and grab and, and run with it, you don't have to deal with the cable. And hopefully at the very least, it's not foolproof, but hopefully it'll make somebody kind of go, ah, it'll take too much time if, if they did want to steal it. And I don't think that happens very often, but just in case, I like being able to secure my case to the bag itself. All right, so now you've made it to travel day, right? So you did all your research, you've emptied out your bags, made sure everything was all clear, you prepared your firearm to make sure it's empty and dry, you prepared your magazines empty and dry, you know, that's in a hard case, your ammunition's in a hard case, it's within the limits of the airlines, uh, and it's travel day. So you head to the airport. Now, I tend to give myself about two hours, hour and a half to two hours, sometimes a little bit closer, just depends on traffic and such, but I try to give for about two hours. Now I get through the line normally fairly quickly. Sometimes I'll get hung up because somebody else has something that, you know, is tying up all the TSA agents and you're stuck behind, you know, this huge line and only one person working back there to try and clear these items, okay? So here's the first thing that you're going to do. When you get to the airport, you're going to go to the ticketing agent and you're going to say a magic phrase. I'd like to declare an item. I'd like to declare an item. What I don't want you to do is be like, I got a gun. That's a quick way to get yourself in trouble, okay? Go in there and say, I'd like to declare an item. They'll turn to you and say, what kind of an item? And you can just tell them, I have a firearm, okay? At that point, they've prepared themselves. Don't just go in there and you know, ambush them with the, with, the, with the gun word, okay? 2023 is not that, not that friendly. All right, so you're gonna tell them, they're gonna fill out a quick form. They might ask for ID but you fill out a quick form, a tag. They will put a tag either on the top of your case or inside of the case, okay? Remember earlier I said, hey, I always put a chamber flag in the firearm, right? Indicating that the gun is empty. If you don't put that in, sometimes they will turn around and ask you to, hey, can you show us that the gun is empty? Now, I'm not a big fan for handling my firearm in an airport. I kind of feel like that's a, you know, environment that can go completely wrong, especially if you have somebody who's got bad intentions. And so I'd rather have the flag in there, let them look at the flag and they see this big orange thing sticking out of it. They're like, okay, well, you know, the gun's empty. All right. And so they lock it up. At that point, they will either put it on the x-ray bag and now you're completely done, 
or there'll be a TSA agent who comes over, grabs the bag, puts it through their own personal uh, x-ray machine, and then you're done. They'll tell you to stick around for 10 to 15 minutes in case they want you to come open the case so that way they can see and verify anything. But for the most part, you're pretty much done. Now you just gotta go through security for yourself and uh, you know get ready for your flight. All right guys, so now you have landed and it's time to get your bag. Where do you go? Well, your bag will be in one of three places, let's hope. Number one, it could come on the regular carousel just like everybody else's bag, okay? That's pretty common. Number two is that it comes in the overweight luggage. So wherever your carousel is in that same area, you'll see a separate area, some little corner that says overweight luggage your bag can arrive there. And if it's not in one of those two places, then you're gonna to have to go to the baggage office, right? And show them your ID and they'll have your bag and they'll give it to you once they confirm that that bag is yours. Now, when you get your bag, there's a couple airlines that actually uh, put some straps or some zip ties around your bag. And they do that because they don't want you to just, you know, fling the bag open, grab your blaster, load it up and go to work, right? And so that is something that you might see. I think Delta does it and I think I think Southwest might also do it, but you'd have to double check with them, all right? Not that big of a deal, just so you're aware. So now that you've got your bag, it's time to leave, right? Now when you leave, make sure that you are abiding by that state's laws. And even if it's reciprocity or otherwise, you're still responsible to maintain the destination state's laws while you're there. Okay, so you might have a Texas license to carry and you go visit Illinois. Well, Illinois, first and foremost, doesn't honor the Texas LTC, but let's just say hypothetically that they did. You still have to follow Illinois' laws, not Texas laws, even though you're a Texas resident, okay? And so make sure that you're abiding by the laws, how you're transporting the firearm, you know, where uh, you can and cannot conceal carry or open carry or carry at all. You have to know those things. That is your responsibility. On a side note, some of you guys know this, I do a lot of subject matter expert work and mostly firearms and self-defense based cases. I've had this come up a couple times when somebody has traveled somewhere, gotten into some kind of an incident that included a firearm or involved a firearm. And one of the things that gets hammered on is the fact that that person is not uh, abiding by that destination's laws, they're trying to follow the laws of their residents and that doesn't work that way, okay? You should have learned that in class a long time ago. So. Uh, keep that in mind as you are traveling with your firearm. All right, guys, now you know what you need to know about traveling with your firearm, or at least as far as taking a commercial flight. Have safe travels, you know, follow the laws, pay attention. I know that uh, some of these steps kind of sound like, oh my God, there's just a lot to remember. It's really not. Once you guys build a system, five minutes you'll be prepped up, ready to go at the airport, declare the item, go through security, and you're done, okay? You just get kind of used to it. Don't be nervous, just remember the magic phrase. I'd like to declare an item. And when they ask you what that item is or the nature of that item, tell them I have a firearm. Don't use gun, okay? It's a trigger word for some odd people and the gate agents get really sweaty when you start talking like that, okay? So just be kind to them. A lot of them have never been around a firearm. They have no idea what the hell they're looking at. They're depending on, you know, the airline to train them on this thing and it never works out that way, okay? But for the most part, most of the places that I've been, they're pretty well trained. It's a, it's a smooth process. The only thing that bogs you down is just a line that's in front of you and the lack of manpower trying to process that line. It's never because like, you know, you have uh, that much incompetence going on. So travel safe, follow the laws, pay attention to where you're at and follow the laws of the destination state. Don't get yourself in any trouble. Till the next video guys, stay safe. I'll see you guys soon.